I'm Shane. And I'm Bo. We are your Kentucky Fried Critics. Welcome back. Another odd number for everyone this week. Yeah, I'm sick of math. We have to keep track so we know what number we're on, I guess. Well, I'm just mainly excited. I don't always have to sit here and be like, oh, what's that divisible by? Yeah, we're not doing that this time. Yeah. I was just mainly excited because it's almost 40. We're, we're like... Yeah, we're getting close. We're in, yeah, next episode. Dude. Like, I mean, that's how close we are. What are we going to do on 50? Are we going to do anything special? I don't know, dude. I, was, I know. I've you, not I know put that. that much thought into it because when we first started, didn't that seemed to, so far away, expect to get so that un, far? Uh, unobtainable, dude. Yeah. Because well, think about it. 52 is a year. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's right. We're 13 episodes away from, from doing this for a year. Dude, we're awesome. That's why I was <laughs> saying, like, it's so crazy. Like, 50? Like, when you say 50, I'm I like, didn't think of it until, like, the other day. I was like, oh, man, we're coming up. We should probably think of doing something. Sp- I know it's usually, like, 100, but fuck that. We'll do 50. We can do 50 just because... It is right yeah. by a year since we do every week and we've not missed a week. Yeah, we haven't missed a week. We're here every week entertaining. <laughs> we might entertaining hit our a people. year. Just as a heads up to people, we might hit a year, take a week or two off as far as uploading. That's not saying we might not work. Yeah, we might not. We might just. That way we can maybe try to get stocked up. It gives us a chance to do some more stuff for you guys if maybe we can get stocked up. Yeah, yeah. Try some new shit. So uh, don't be alarmed. Again, we still got some time until then. If we decide to do that, we'll let you guys know for sure i think we have spent enough time talking about stuff that's not even the socials yet no, it's not so even let's the go socials. ahead and get into those yep. that way we let's can go ahead and breeze through episode. those because our true followers already know but for the new guys this is how you find that's us that's right and so the first one's always the meta trio so it's going to be facebook instagram threads which i have been actually posting on it is real not great posts they're there though <laughs> but i it have exists. been posting something there are things to interact with if you interact with me there now I'll be alerted. (laughs) Yeah, and they will tell him, and he'll be like, oh, I should do more things over here. Yeah. So all of the meta apps, again, those are all just going to be Kentucky Fried Critics. All lowercase, no spacing, nothing special. It's either a slash or an at. It all depends on which handle identifier that website uses. I have no idea. (laughs) Yeah, I'm trying to throw out fancy words, and even I was questioning my own choice there. I was like, I don't know if that's Uh, correct. We don't have enough techno babble for this one. The Uh, positronic relays have (laughs) have decayed, and we need to to jump them through the EPS ODN network, (laughs) route it through the warp plasma core. Oh, that was definitely some techno babble. After the meta apps, we'll go ahead and take care of YouTube. YouTube used to be that one that we were not fans of because it stood out. It was different. I was willing. It wasn't the one we wanted. I was willing to fight those other dudes for their. It didn't match. The, yeah, it, didn't it didn't match, match everything. It wasn't all stuff. samesies. And, you know, we live in a world now where you want everything, everything to, be the, to same. be the same. But you want to be able to say something like you can find us at this on everywhere all the social simplifies things but not here and we hated it but now now this is my brother my beloved my my kfc riddicks that's right we're, we're at youtube you're gonna find us that's gonna be uh, youtube.com slash at kfc riddicks yep the home of the riddick rat he's our beloved mask secondary mascot or, i believe or, he's the youtube channel's mascot. Th- that's what i want to say the, Commander Pop Culture's the the show's is the overall mascot, mascot. Yeah, yeah. but YouTube has its own. That's what yeah. I was gonna say because that way we can start, we can even start distinguishing like our fan base that way, yeah. right? So then if you we, only watch us on YouTube. You then you're, you're gonna, the Riddick Rats. Then you're gonna, man. Be, you're gonna be one of the our rats. Rattlings. That's right. I want it now. I want that more than anything. I want a, I want a big group of followers and fans, and we are just the the Rattlings, right? <laughs> Now, that being said, with YouTube, the other thing you guys might have noticed, so that, though, the Back to the Beach, we finally updated a little bit for YouTube. Yeah. It's no longer the same old, same old cartoony picture. Again, but if you we're can't go- do the same thing over and over. Well, and again, we're wanting to get to video. Yeah. And so if the first step we can take is to try to at least let you guys see our faces. Yep, our, <laughs> our lovely mugs. And so we're, we're at least going one step further until we get to video, which hopefully will be soon. Yeah, real soon. We just don't know for sure yet uh oh, it's still working on it's it. again it's, a, it's remember those big plans i was talking about earlier plans, that's right 
right. I think that's enough talk on YouTube. Yeah, though. YouTube. Uh, you just know YouTube. that we're trying to do more there yep. because we do understand we live in a world where lots of people like to law of diminishing they, returns. Well, they like to watch their podcast yeah. as much as they do listen, right? And I mean, I'm just as guilty of that. I have some podcasts that, uh, again, I'll listen to them, if but I'm my driving, preferred way to is to watch to it. view yeah. them is to watch it. So, like I tried to do once already. Let's <laughs> move off of YouTube. <laughs> let's move away. We're done. We're done with YouTube. Continue on. Uh, the next one is going to be our website. And again, our website, it's the hub for everything. Yeah. You're going to find us at shows.acast.com slash Kentucky hyphen fried hyphen critics. I'm getting so much better. Yeah. Well, it used to be your favorite. And I'm now the, like, I think that's what happened. You were already getting better. Your your hyphen, uh, hyphen addiction mania. was already getting better. And then you found something to help re- a healthier thing. A healthier to thing to it replace with. it with. Shame. Riddick Rat has replaced my hyphens in my heart. All right. And then that's just going to lead us straight to the last one. That's going to be our email. You can Again, all of these, like I already said, the website's a hub. You can yeah. find all of this stuff there. The email is also there. But we, again, and for the people who don't use the webs, the interwebs, the web to webs, that dim damned internet. Again, if you're not using the interwebs, I don't know how good <laughs> having our email is going to be for you, but it just buy up. In case you need it, here you it ha- is. You'll have it. It's Kentucky Fried Critics at gmail.com. All lowercase, no spacing. You no, no. It's done the same way. No it's hyphens, been since no the underscores, 90s, right? no anything like that. We we did luck out. Nobody had that. Yeah, nobody had that. Yeah, we, were we didn't lucky have to there. do anything fancy to it. No, not like nineteen numbers at yeah, the ass. End nothing of like it. that. Exactly. We got lucky. Yeah, there. we we were super lucky there. All right, so we're officially done with socials at that point. So we can go ahead and. Why don't we tell them what we're drinking first? Well, today, my my dear friends, ladies, and fine ladies especially, we are drinking some Courvoisier. And if that wasn't a good enough yeah. clue if, for if you. If they don't already know exactly from what, you just what said, I'm talking about. Yeah. Well, and again, the, you know, unlike when we would do a beer where we maybe got a little bit more to talk to you about. That's it. The, you know, Courvoisier. Courvoisier, it's, it's a cognac. Uh, so this is French brandy. Yeah. It's made. It's got to come from a specific spot. Or yeah, it's not, just it's like, like champagne. So uh, I think. I think last week when I called it French French cognac, that was like. It was like a yeah, it was like <laughs> a double negative. Obviously, we can jump off of the liquor and straight into it. But like you said, certainly saying it the way you <laughs> the said way it I just now. It. If you didn't know before we got to today. Like if the post didn't give it away, if the picture of the uh, the, the incense and the, incense the Cavassier and... itself didn't give it away, it's the ladies' man. Yes, it's some some Leon Phelps, the ladies' man, your your official expert on love. <laughs> Can't help but do the voice when you talk when you when you're talking about certain it. lines, especially. Yeah, especially. Yeah. This movie is infinitely quotable, and we'll be hitting a lot. Of <laughs> I'm guys, sure. I'm gonna, you're gonna get annoyed with my voice eventually. But yeah. So this is an SNL movie. It's you know the '90s were the heyday. For yeah, those sure. were. The great ones. And we're like Coneheads. 90s The Roxbury. Superstar. Yeah. Superstar. So, I mean, the 90s had a lot of... Then we hit this one, The Ladies' Man, in 2000. And they just, they just kind of stopped. Well, again, uh, this one didn't do well. I know you were in shock when I told you this. You have very fond memories from your childhood. Yeah, I love this movie. And you just didn't know what the real world thought about <laughs> it. But yeah, this movie is... It's, it's apparently like, offensive. It offended a lot of people, even then. Yeah. Which is saying something. Cause this oh, is, now and, I get how people... People would be offended. But back then, I'm just like, come on, it's just funny. But apparently, it still insulted a lot of people's sensibilities. Yeah. I thought it was funny. It's hilarious. It's still funny. It probably wasn't as funny today as it was when I was a teenager, but it was still funny. Yeah, I'm not still trying. Funny. To, I'm not. Uh, I didn't go into it, and I wasn't like uh, offended. A combination. It wasn't that I was offended, and I also wasn't just like, "This is so stupid. I don't want to watch it." Yeah. There were a couple of moments where I maybe was like, ah, Man, "Okay, we definitely can't do that now." But well, <laughs> not even that. There were a couple of moments where I was like, "This is maybe too stupid." Yes. <laughs> oh, this is. This but is they quickly walked past them. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it's not one of those movies where they hit one the stupid jokes and they just stay just, on it and you're just, just like hammer it like make hey you want, make you hey, want to turn you, it off did you see did you see the dumb thing we did over here they, they did a pretty good job of like not like just oh, letting it let not it overstaying it's well before we go any further we should definitely recap who's in this movie it's good idea got a ton of people it's got everybody it's star studded I mean it's got SNL because again this is 2000 so we're talking Will Ferrell so this is not like superstar Will Ferrell well I mean it's like the movie superstar Will yeah, Ferrell but, but it's not like super Superstar. He was not a superstar. He hadn't hit the big time like he is now. This is like a year after Night at the Roxbury's or something like that. Yeah, he's just getting started. Yeah, this is 
early on. It's only a few years after he really got into like television. Yeah, I think he'd only been on SNL for a few years by yeah. this point. So I mean, this is this is by no means like legendary Will Ferrell, and yet. definitely not his breakout role, which I think it should have been. But it's starring Tim Meadows, who was until recently with Keenan. I want to say he was like the longest running cast member. For, yeah, because been on there for my childhood. Yeah, I remember was him. Tim Meadows on SNL. I don't remember him not, not being, being there. A background character yeah, in almost every, every skit. skit. So I love Tim Meadows. I thought this. I thought this was his chance. Finally, yeah, I remember I when like, this came out. Yeah, I was so big. excited for him. I was like, finally, dude's getting his shot. He's getting his chance. He's gonna do it, and it fizzled. Mm, so unfortunate. This is such a good movie. Yeah, so mad I, about it. He, I want to go back in time. He didn't get his due. But yeah, so Tim Meadows is playing Leon Phelps. It's his character. He originated yeah, on, on SNL. SNL. This is a much raunchier take. Right? Yeah, it's this just, is a rated R movie. Yep. Most most SNL movies are like PG-13. Yeah, so this, this one they're a, like, no, don't bring your kids. This one went Which harder. of course, made all of us kids want to see it. Yeah, yeah, we're like, oh, dude, man, there's some shit in this movie where even when I was a kid, I was like, oh, no. Yeah, it went a little far maybe a little further than even the snl character you know like that might be why it's it didn't problem resonate have, with a lot of people probably the problem when you have a lot of people who are used to just ad living their line and coming up with shit on the fly sometimes shit goes too far after tim meadows will hit karen parsons she played julie so she's our, our female lead in the movie she's a producer i guess you'd call it yeah, yeah. no she's his, yeah, a, his yeah. producer she's she's the one again like he for the uninitiated sorry we didn't say this yeah leon phelps is the ladies man yeah Yep. But he runs a radio show where you call in with your with your with your love problems and he'll tell you some advice on it. Probably not good advice. Or advice. something. Or it's something. Usually, it's usually not good advice. Not, well, and it's almost never how the call actually works. It's no. usually someone needing something unrelated to sex and he finds a way to bring Make it, it up to, to sex. sex. Yeah. But yeah, so Julie is his producer, played by Karen Parsons. Like I said, this is Hillary. Is that what I said? Yeah, Hillary, from, is Hillary Fresh from Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Uh, she is also the love interest in Major Pain. Major you Pain. Have probably seen her in things is yeah. what i'm getting at she is definitely someone that you'll recognize she's one of our people yeah and now we'll just kind of move down the list i'm not going to tell you yeah, just, every, let's go so, and i'll try not to interrupt yeah we've got billy d williams, billy as, d. williams. as the bartender he's got a name it's lester. lester i don't really know if we hear it often enough for that to matter not really, really just know that he's I think the you bartender. see the sign more yeah. than you actually hear him which, say mean, it. which means we don't even technically know that has to be his name right how many bartenders work at places that they don't own plenty good point uh then we got uh, will ferrell like we already said yeah. young uh, uh, a younger, well, not young by his age, but young as in his career state, I yeah. guess, is really the way to go with that. Young Early Will career, Will well, Ferrell. We got Eugene Levy. Yeah. That's great. Not very big He's got role. two scenes, yeah, yeah. but they're both great. Those eyebrows are iconic. <laughs> Don't, he can't ever get rid of them. No, if he were, be. If he were to like suddenly like get like in an accident and get him burned off, his career is over. The rest of these are going to be small. I'm not even going to tell you names. Just know that they're in there. But so we do have like special appearances by most of the cast members of Kids in the Hall, which is a great sketch comedy show. I know you said you've not yeah, seen not it. Seen you should it. see it. It's produced by Lauren Michaels. So again, it's a SNL sibling, if you want. It's like a Canadian SNL sibling. Side project? No, because it's in no way SNL. It's very, very different type very of different. show. Oh. Very different. Dude, like these are like the, if, if you want to look at it as in like uh, SNL is like Lauren Michaels' kid, right? Like you're like, he, yeah. he's been handcrafted that show since it started. Then think of that as his other kid. It's like the edgy little brother. Oh. To SNL. Well, there's no musical the, the guest. punk rock. Yeah, there's no musical guest. It would generally just go straight into sketches. Like, there was no, like... Oh, cool. Is it on anything? Probably like I have no idea. You. It's what helped rise, like, the beginning, early yeah. years of Comedy Central. Yeah. Sweet. Dude, these are faces you'll recognize. They're, well, some of them went on to do SNL. Some of them went on to do other Wasn't things. Wasn't like Jim Carrey on it? No. It's Dave Foley, who is the guy from News Radio. He's the main guy. Kevin McDonald, who was the mailman in this yeah the you know the, man, about, the, like wiry the 70s are over man yeah that guy bruce mccullough who again if you saw him you'd know and then god damn i'm feeling I, this is so weird that i don't i didn't plan this <laughs> no it's fine i want everybody to, I, well this is for everybody listening i didn't plan this bo can attest all yeah. of these up until the last one have been off the top of my head yeah he doesn't have a kids in the hall up on imdb right now <laughs> how many more you got there's only one more that's it oh, is that i it? can't remember his name give me a second scott thompson nice is the last guy 100 percent. good job man yeah so definitely go see that now i need to get off of them 
<laughs> I got back, way back, way off track on the wrong kids in the show. Hall. Yeah. We need to go back to the SNL related movie. Yeah. Now I'll hit a few of the females because yep. again, he is the ladies man. He is the, the ladies, the ladies man. are all very prevalent in the movie. Of the many that we see, the two most popular, I would say, is. Julianne Moore. Yep. She's the clown. Yep. She's just she's Bloopy. Bloopy the clown. <laughs> but she went on to be Clarice in, you know, not and Silence of the Lambs, Silent obviously. Hannibal. Yeah. And right, Hannibal. that one. Yeah. Uh, she was the one who took over the role. Uh, and then. She was good. I like that movie. Yeah. It's not a bad movie. And she did pretty good. Take, you know, for someone who had to take over, you know, like. From she, Jodie Foster? Yeah. Fuck, she yeah, knew she was replacing. Shoes. Yeah. She did all right. And then the other, the only other one I really want to mention is Tiffany Amber Thiessen. Right. Kelly Kapowski. Looking uh, like a looking, smoke show. Yes. Oh, my God. All right, guys. Those I guess are the said, most important Those people. are the most important people. There but are everyone people, else is valid. But there are other people. And you know, again, we're, we've been trying to get better about mentioning a lot of these at the beginning. So that way we don't like go way off course in the middle of talking about the movie. I mean, we could just like, at but the, we, we could just do a credits at the end, right? Just <sighs> list off people's people names. People would stop. That would be boring as shit, yeah, People stop listening. Yeah. So we're just trying to do this in the way that works because we want you to know people. We don't want to forget people. We love of giving people their due. Yeah. Because right? so uh, some of these are movies you guys don't watch. Yeah. And we want you to and know we want who was people in people to know we that these guys know, did this and it's awesome. And sometimes they did great roles that you just don't, don't pay attention to. That is also why we always tell you don't come at us if we forget people because you hear us. We're trying our yeah, best. Yeah, we're trying our best. Man. But we can't spend all day here. Uh, let's get into the movie itself. Yep. I think we are definitely into at this, a point where we can do classic, that. Into this classic. This classic fucking it, movie. It, that's what I was going to, one of the things I was going to mention earlier is that this movie somehow you know again it wasn't big with yeah. with the mainstream and that's fine but usually a movie like this would get like a, end cult up being a cult following this movie doesn't no, even have no that. one talks about it at all it's not in the zeitgeist it's as dumb. people would say yeah it's i protest I vehemently no i will point out one thing that you would say when you watch a movie like this right yeah it's maybe the the modern day crowd is who they're super afraid of offending and not wanting to make it for yeah, yeah? probably like the gen z and younger right yeah one of my uh nibblings and that's a word everybody i will let you look it up yourselves watch this movie and they laughed through all of it they watched it after i went to bed we left the room so it wasn't even just like to like oh we don't want to yeah like, it wasn't even to yeah we don't want like to make uncle shane mad it wasn't just to pacify me right yeah, like they they genuinely wanted to watch this they're gonna show their friends now you know they are well and that's why we do this yeah, too exactly we want everybody to show your friends we're trying to show everything you, we talk about we're trying to show you the things we love even the stuff that we say is bad well even Go the stuff watch that, it too even when we know it's dumb we yeah. know that it's good dumb it's good dumb it's fun dumb dumb is fun sometimes as of yet i don't think we've done a movie that we actually just don't don't like, like. yeah i don't think like that's we might have yet. done movies where we're like look i don't like things about this movie but overall it's a good yeah, yeah. it's overall a good movie even the uh, one that i was convinced of the home for the holidays I was convinced I was not going to like that movie. It was good. It was really good. So sometimes you need that in your yeah, life. Yeah, sometimes you get surprised. All right, we <laughs> we got off track again. So this movie starts right away. There's no opening music. No, it's just like kind of radio announcer talking, right? Well, it's the guy who's on yeah, before, the guy Leon. before Leon. We, we quickly find Money out, yeah. Mike or something yeah. like that. Well, and that this is a financial radio station did you notice that yeah because he's talking about like the stock and everything well even when but when he closes out he even says this is w w r i x news and financial network no i missed that part how did leon get a job here they needed somebody to fill that 2 a.m spot man <laughs> that is the thing it is overnight it's the, yeah. it's nobody wants this and what would you put on you know that that's a if you're doing financial shit that's a part of the night where it almost doesn't matter because you're like an hour away from the new yeah. numbers coming out or something right so i understand why it's not a so leon yeah really how'd this guy get here but yeah we're, we're hearing him he's closing out his his radio his his shift on he's, the radio he's doing his like outro and leon is going around and like changing the set around him. getting everything ready i mean like well and it's not just leon did you notice you could see the red coat so it was definitely supposed to be julie oh too. julie's helping him yeah. to do shit they're just in there they're like in the middle of him talking and he's having to like get up out of his chair and shit and they're putting up candles and lighting incense and pouring the cavassier getting everything right i love his chair 
chair. He just kicks dude out of the way and rolls up this big purple hand chair. I want this thing. Well, and let's take a moment to talk about this. He lights incense and the craziest candle, dude. Like I'm telling you right now, the, and it's every a, candle you see in this movie looks straight up like fuck. looks like it came out of Spencer's yeah, gifts. The, the is, set designer just went and raided Spencer's. It is like a neon color with other colors that it'll melt into right. to leave a trippy colored wax. And I get it. It's supposed to. They were like, we need seventies. Seventies. But they still look weird. They look almost out of place. I like the pyramid one that he likes yeah. in, the, in the beginning. I'm like, that's pretty fucking cool. It's the it's the most tame. Yeah, but the rest of like they the get wild like later in his, in his yeah, boat, in his, place, in his boat, yeah. dude. There's some crazy ones in there. Yeah, so like you said, he's got his his cavassier. Mm. It's why we're drinking our cavassier. He drinks his neat. We're drinking, we're drinking ours neat. neat. It's how I usually drink my my booze. And side note, so far. Mm. As soon as the other guy's out, he starts his stuff up. And you quickly see that despite his offensive nature, he must be good at his job. Yeah. He must be good. People listen. He has a smooth the way of talking. The phone board immediately starts is lighting lit up. up it's like, he's like, he does his little intro. Hey, I am the ladies' man. The phones are lighting up. Let's take a call. It's full. Yep. Every lots of people all of for two o'clock in the morning. Lots These of people, people trying to sleep. Call I guess. Well, I guess maybe the people who aren't sleeping are the people who might <laughs> yeah, yeah, like this. have some problem they need to talk about. So I guess maybe that pans out. We get a quick scene where we see how he handles a couple of phone calls, plus how his producer handles things. She is definitely, I guess, unbeknownst to him. Like maybe he knows and he just doesn't, doesn't realize really how serious it is. But she fields a lot of complaints. So what we can assume is now half of the board that's lit up are going to be complaints. Are just complaints. And like about maybe like two or three or actual said. questions. And she just forwards only the people yeah. who have a, a question to him. But he somehow just still thinks he's the shit. Yep. He's like, I'm helping people. Well, you know, he's got himself a PhD in Tang. In Tang, as it were. <laughs> he's got no other qualifications. I love when he says that. I'm he's not a psychologist, a psychiatrist, a psychiatrist. I'm not or anything not qualified like that. in any kind of way like that. I have slept with many many fine ladies, so it does make me kind of an expert. It's like, I mean, can't argue with that. Just to paint a picture for you in case, in case you didn't ever see the skit, so that way you have like a brief idea, right? Of what of, the skit of, was. Yeah, and of the kind of things that he might say. My favorite one, as we're going for this little intro moment here, is... No, I definitely know chlamydia is a soup. I see it on the store shelves. I don't care if you're a doctor. I'm not arguing with you about this. <laughs> when you cut to the producer, when you cut to Julie, apparently before the chlamydia statement, he said clam soup <laughs> was the thing that is a venereal disease, and chlamydia is the name of the soup. <laughs> so you got it mixed up. The All of this is just, a, again, set up for us... The wildness yep. that is his call in radio. And no matter station. what anybody says when they call in, it's oh, always it's, like, oh, that's great. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Say what you want about Leon Phelps. Yeah. He is a very positive guy. Yeah. He, you can tell him the worst shit, and he's going to be like, oh, well, that's okay. That's cool. And he's going to try to cheer you up. Right. It, you know, if you're having a bad day, he is definitely the uplifting kind of guy. What's it, the, the lady? She's like, I'm really shy. He's like, oh, what you do is, is you go down to the bowling alley or the bus stop with no underpants on. See, you'd be real surprised how many times men will approach you when you ain't got no underpants on. I know I would. <laughs> it's great. It's awesome. That immediately slides into our right now mysterious narrator. I just say yep. that because it does it's it just pays, a, it pays off in a moment. It's a very familiar, pleasing, deep voice. And he's telling us that Leon Phelps started out life as an orphan. As one yep. of the literally orphan on a stoop. On a stoop. He just know. opens it up and it's fucking Hugh Hefner well, from it's Playboy. Not really it's a, Hugh Hefner, but it's definitely and, uh, supposed to be a Hugh Hefner uh, like, substitute. Yeah. Right? He's a Wish stand list in. Hugh Hefner. Yeah. He can't be Hugh Hefner because this guy has no... Leon was going to be his heir apparent. Yeah. Hugh Hefner has male sons. That's true. That's the only reason. I mean, I'm literally splitting but the most hairs. They're clearly Playboy bunnies. They're Playboy bunnies. They're definitely saying he is a play, He is the Playboy. He, yeah. is, he lives in a life where they're always around, taking care. He makes sure that Leon learns all the greatest things in life, like stereo equipment and, and how to talk to women. And how to talk to women. You know, the essentials. It sets up for us that Leon was going to inherit. They tell us that Leon yeah, was, was going to inherit, inherit all of it. All of this here. was going to be his. Till the only up. thing he couldn't do. The one thing is off limits. There's always The one. man's woman. Any other woman was fine. Yep. 
One woman. She smiled at him. It's her fault. On top of that, I'll point out that much like we see Leon, the rest of the movie is completely oblivious to everything. I feel like he was oblivious to this because when the dude walks in in the like flashback, and yeah, and he gives him, he the, gives thumbs him the thumbs up. up like, he's like, I'm just doing what you taught me, Dad. Yeah. Right? Like, he, I totally don't think he... He wasn't doing it maliciously. He no. never does it maliciously. No. In he's fact, not he's not he's a non-threatening hound dog. Well, I I'll admit that the major plot of the movie is the fact that he is indeed <laughs> he's again, he's not cheating. He's no. not in a relationship, but no. he is indeed giving facilitating these... cheating. Yeah. And he should be more apparent of the situation, but he's not. I'm sure they all have rings on. Uh, but so, yeah, he gets thrown out. To, we'll, we'll get back on the topic here. Yeah, he gets thrown out of the Playboy Mansion. <laughs> cast aside. Cast asunder from his... Out his, into the rain. His his possible royal... <laughs> <laughs> the king has been Life dethroned, that he was going right? to have, yeah. And, and that le- leads him to the life that he's going to have now as yeah. the ladies' man. As it were. And then we see him walk into his favorite local shithole bar. Just to find out, that's who our narrator yep, was. Our narrator. Our bartender. Our bar bartender. Owner. And it's motherfucking Billy D. Williams. Playing Lester. <laughs> we don't hear his name that many times. We hear it more in that that's the name of the bar. I love this narration bit. This is a good thing. Like he's narrating, It happens a couple of times. He's narrating yeah. to us, but then they'll cut into the scene and Leon is always like, what the hell are you talking to? Or something and like he's that. Just he's like, like oh, hey man, I'm, I'm trying to talk right he's now. Like, he said, who are you even telling this to? Right. There's only six people in this bar. They're the only people who are ever And they're here. always here. He's like, well, maybe somebody don't know who you is. Yeah, I don't think so. He's like, no, that ain't possible. It was a good way to do the narrator thing. Mm-hmm. We see that the bar is full of people that love Lee. Again, like, this yeah. is part of why he can have this uh, self-inflated idea of himself. Yeah, these people He's in a bar him. where these people are like, no, he is. He's the coolest guy in town. Saved my second and fourth marriages. <laughs> yep. I love Scrap Iron. I love, dude, that's a cool nickname too i want to be called scrap iron can, can uh, we start that <laughs> i'll be scrap iron it's yeah. my gimmick name right so he because he was there he's kind of defending his behavior on the radio to everybody yeah. what's weird is they set this scene up right like maybe it's the producer's first time there yeah but they've been there for like two years but yeah li- well literally as as you're watching the scene happen and you're thinking like oh that's why it's going on like this right yeah maybe she doesn't know all of these people then you quickly see that she does and you're like so then why was why scrap she? iron she's had two years you think yeah. she doesn't know no, that, that he he's... saved the second and fourth marriage i'm sure you've told him that story before scrap right the other thing i want to point out about that's weird about this movie is we never get told who was working in radio first was she already a producer and thought he'd make a great personality was he already working in radio and thought hey She'd maybe she could be producer? a good producer for me because or were they both just like hey let's go try and be in radio together? at the same because time because we again like we said we immediately go from this moment where they're in the bar and it seems like she's being introduced to yeah, the we people were but get, she like, does we then get told by billy d two years ago yeah, two years is when ago, she first she started coming here. here and she met everybody including leon himself and that's when their dynamic duo started but he doesn't tell us about work no she just runs in in a wedding dress we don't even really get an explanation get on that it. we don't find out until like later in the movie that she was the one who got dumped and that's why she was running in the red wedding dress yes it's nothing gets explained in this scene it's just she runs in in the dress sits down and Leon tries to hit on yeah, her. And that in two years. Yep, Those are the only years. piece of real information that are told to us. That's it. It's your daddy a butcher? Because it looks like she somebody stole it, two big ass hams and put them in like, the back of their dress. It looks like someone shoved two fine ass hams into the back of that dress. She laughed though. She I mean no, because it again, is funny. It's funny because most of the girls think that he's not being serious. But he is. But he is. <laughs> like he genuinely thought that was a good pickup line. She was just like, he's coming at me with the worst yeah. to be funny. But he's dead serious. <laughs> That's this how his charm works. Tends to be how it works for him. And he's very non threatening. Like he says these outlandish shit, but he at no point comes across as like creepy pervert when he says it. Even it's in, always in a joking, you know, lighthearted manner. So the yeah, the beginning starts really weird with the way it flows. Because yeah. again, we got that two second, two year flashback yep. that immediately cuts right back into present day where Leon spots the hot chick at the bar. Yep. And we get his little play by play on how he's going to go pick her up. His play by play sounds exactly like a dude who got tossed out from a, a <laughs> smooth talker at 17. Yeah. Like he learned the very first step, right? Yep. He walks up to her and is smooth. Other than what he actually, actually says, asks how her. he says it. This is my favorite line right. in the movie. 
Can I buy you a fish sandwich? I quoted that so much when this movie hey came man, out. Hey, man, if, if you talk to a chick and you say that to her and she she knows what you're talking about. Oh, it's a keeper. Oh, it's a keeper. But everything else he says after that was really smooth, right? Like in yeah. his head. Like he was like, this is going to be good. But then he quickly devolves from smoothness to weirdness <laughs> to straight up like, I'm just going to drop trout. I'm just going to show I'm her gonna my dick. I'm going to drop trout. And, and there's that's a gonna chorus. Win. And it glows with its mighty aura of, oh. And so, like I said, again, like, I can totally buy that he was, like, somewhere between the ages of 15 and 17 when he got thrown out, right? Like, he's stuck at that age. He didn't didn't know know how how to close the deal. Right. He knew how to start it. And then he just goes into, like, 14-year-old pervert. Yep. (laughs) Right? Like, jumps right into it, like, want to see my cock? And then, but then that's the moment where you start to be like, how does it work out for him? How does it? How is he the ladies' man? This is a question that gets asked a lot in this movie. But then we see what actually happens, right? He walks Walks up up. to her and she instantly just says, whatever, come with me. My husband's not home. Let's go. And so this is what I'll posit to you. He he even asks her, he's like, so you don't, you don't want a fish sandwich? (laughs) So I'll even posit to you from the very beginning, they are trying to set up to us that yes, he has indeed slept with lots of women. All kinds. But they are always women like like this right there are women that are like fed up they're not the, they don't care yeah whatever dude is going to be the dude yep, because she's looking for is for a reason it's not for the dude you know I mean like it's not because he's mm-hmm. the ladies man it's because somehow he's had a sixth sense for being the dude who shows up right when a woman's like next guy that walks into this bar i am gonna jump right on right him. yep that's what it is. Yeah, that's it. That's all that ever happens. That's all we see. Yeah. We don't see him actually smoothly pick up anybody. Not really. Except for maybe... The clown? Well, I don't even... I think she was just Randy. I, I guess. But that's the only one where he doesn't have... He, yeah, it, yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. not like... She just kind of jumps him. But, but isn't that what we just said? Though? Yeah, yeah, I guess. Huh? <laughs> just disproves my whole point. That's true. We're doing it. We're both doing it. left and right. We're <laughs> just my, we're just turn. knocking ourselves out left and right. We're just like, God damn it, we're wrong. No, don't listen to us. Yeah, we're stupid. Don't listen to us. No, wait, wait, hang on. Man, this Cavassier keep is, listening to <laughs> this Cavassier is kicking hard, and it definitely is making our intelligence drop right. fast. Maybe we, that's ah, Leon's problem. There it is. He needs to switch booze. Look, it took us a while to get there, but we right. finally we, we made a reasonable judgment. He needs call to switch it. over to a nice scotch. Something else that's something, not, high, something highbrow, right? Something that's not. Dumb him down but yeah so once he started hitting on the the woman and get taken out julie left julie was like that's my she, cue yeah, she, i know she what's about to happen never I'm wants to be here. there for that she's not that girl doesn't she's matter. just her yeah. she's just she's just friend. a friend although you can tell she seems like she's upset billy d even gives us already like the knowing like glance of the camera yeah, it looks this is one of those movies where billy d breaks the fourth wall because he's our narrator but he still tries to do a sly right like yeah. it's never it's usually him not on screen and, and then if he does pop into... on screen they find a way to like slide it into him not not talking to us right yep. like someone else like again like we said when when leon heard him talking right? like, who you finishing talking to? to us he was like oh no 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 no, no. Oh, i'm talking to somebody who might not know who you are <laughs> and so it, it's done really well but yeah billy d is already kind of giving us that look of like you guys see what's you going see what's on up here, here right you know how this story Leon's is gonna go a moron can't he see can't what's see. right in front yeah. of his face already from get they wanted us to know that yep but so, yeah, so Leon does. He goes home with her. And we cut to um, another one of those guys. I've seen this dude in so much shit. Oh, the husband, Barney. Lee yeah. Evans. That's his name. Yeah, Lee Evans. Yeah, he's in a lot of stuff. Uh, he is definitely funny. He's a very yeah, funny I love, guy. I love this guy. We quickly realize he is the man who is being jilted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> by the woman. Yeah, by the woman. Well, no, because he'd be in the. Oh, yeah, he'd be in there he'd enjoying be inside it. for that. That's right. So it's not that. Not that. He's jilted. He's. There you go. Uh, fucked over yeah poor bastard well but this scene plays out so fucking crazy right like so he comes home <laughs> goes to, open the door but it's got chain lock chain on so he can't get in he yells to his wife and she actually answers yeah and starts trying to give him this bs story well, about like the closet and shit while she's on but was it bs i don't even know if it's bs was she just telling him the story she's why like was what this, she did earlier that day why was this what was being talked about why did she think she was gonna get away with this I where know, was, she even she just drops it like halfway through it is just starts just being like oh yes oh my god 
I just don't. Well, because by that point, he had already started. Yeah, he I, just flat out was asking. You know, her. you got a dude in there. But yeah, it was so random because I'm just like, how is this supposed to end? Like, there was, I mean, there was no way it was ending where he wasn't knowing. Why'd you keep going? As soon yeah. as the door opened, you should have been like, fuck, get the fuck yeah. out of here. No. <laughs> again, so again, the, so like I said, one of the things that maybe might have put this movie down yeah. uh, is the fact that it, it does have a lot of cheating and spousal. Which is not okay. Which is but not it cool. is played out. I mean, to, to, again, the way this scene plays out is so comical it's, it's to make sure funny. you understand this isn't real yeah because in in the it's real world farce. yeah emotions would have been very different for everybody you involved. know leon's getting shot while he yeah, tries to go out the window very lighthearted. Yeah. even once the dude breaks through the door it's very comical he hits the, like, ah, yeah he hits the physical the comedy extra yeah, hard fucking good uh he runs into the room just in time to see leon because he's definitely had his fair share of he's this experience you can tell this before he zip lines down the clothesline. Down line. the clothesline outside. The only thing he sees as he runs to the window and looks is Leon's ass bare naked as he's running down the street. He's got a tattoo. Have that. a nice day. Big smiley smiley face. face. Sticking out his tongue. Yep. What a fuck you. Right. Just what a fuck. What that's a fuck the last you thing you see. See after some guy just bangs your wife is just to have a nice day running down the fucking street. You can assume that this has happened many times many from time. how slickly he goes, right. right? But we do very soon find out that, yes, not only has this generally happened, but many of them, the last thing they see is the is the is tattoo. The tattoo. <laughs> In the studio the next night. This was that was such a hard cut. It, it was, was. So we're weird, just automatically right, right back it's, into the it's studio. It's ass shot Leon's face studio next night. Yeah. Right. And by chance, Barney the caller is, is calling Barney. the show. And he is I feel bad. He's like completely he's trashed a, his whole apartment. He's like just like leaned on the wall. I don't even understand what the, the wallpaper why he's doing off. that. Dude. Like that was the, intense. Like he has to make it clean. The, but that's the not clean. Did you see it? Did you see the state of that it place? It must be removed. It looked like hobos Lived there. He started with like a brush and bleach, it's, but that wasn't enough. He had to like tear the wallpaper completely off. It's been less than 24 hours and it looks like that was a hobo camp. It looked like an abandoned building. But so you know, he, he's talking to him, he's trying to get advice. And at first he's like, Yeah, Leon. <laughs> Leon being true Leon is like, I don't understand a problem. Sounds like a frisky you night had, if you ask Right? Me. Sounds like you had a good time. Because Leon was like, Oh, the devil's threesome. I yeah, got gotcha. you. Oh, okay. yeah, buddy. Sounds like a good time. She was just uh, surprising you. I yeah. got you. And he's like, no, 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 I didn't want that. I just kind of walked in on it. Well, he says, what to do. he says, he says, I, I saw, saw this was guy a tattoo of on it. He starts to say, he says, smiley. And before he can finish, Leon cuts him off. Uh, well, we're going to go to a break right now and <laughs> push some just buttons. Kind of like, I'll get the Wait, fuck out of here, play some music. To, but that. what's your favorite hole? <laughs> but yeah, when we get back, we're going to do a poll. What is your favorite hole? <laughs> and on that note, he loses it a little bit, right? Like, yeah, uh, poor Barney. Barney. Barney is just he's like, Got a, he's got he a ties noose. the noose. Again, this is probably one of those things. It's a little dark. It's quick and it flashes through, but I can see why a lot of people might have gotten upset about yeah, it. Yeah, I get it. And we're not going to use the words because there's a chair, there's a rope, a ceiling things, fan, a ceiling fan. Some things happen, but he does end up just kind of. But it doesn't work, so it doesn't he, matter. He crotches himself on the chair and busts his balls and knocks over the TV, which turns on the turns remote. on the remote. He, set, he steps on the remote, yeah. turns it on. Which it happens to be porn. Just happens to be porn. I guess maybe it's what was on the TV for uh, the uh, night before with Leon watching, and the, yeah, they were, ah, that little pregame. Nice. Has to be, right? For that to be the thing that Fuck he yeah, turned. man. Worst timing in the world. His wife walks in okay. right after he had pulled his pants down. Why? I get you busted your nuts, but why did you have to take your pants off to rub them? Maybe he was wearing tidy whities so he needed, uh, needed the room just, for the hand the massage, massage yeah, right? To, to actually help. I didn't understand why he had to take his pants off, man. I've been kicked in the balls. I didn't have to take my pants off to hold them. Now you know. Maybe he had a different problem. His his balls are bigger than mine. That's what it is. Well, certainly after <laughs> they are it, now. <laughs> after taking a beating like that, dude. right? Jeez. Uh, back to on topic. Yeah. Here, so his wife walks in. He's bare ass. Looks like he's just jerking it hard. Freaky, freaky jerking. He got the noose around his neck. The porn going. Everything's all trash. Yes, he's exactly. Just like, it looks ah. like he's got the weirdest kind of kink going. Yeah. On. And she's just like, nope, I'm out. And he tries to go after her and just falls again. Uh, poor guy. Great with the physical. The physical. Physical comedy. comedy is great out of that guy. We hard cut again to hours later because yeah, like it's the end day. of. Well, I think it's still the same radio show, but the but end, it's of, the it. end of it. So it's still like hours later. Yeah. Right. With no notice of the of how much time and to a moment in time to a thing that has no reference to anything that's happened in the movie. Right. Because now we find out that despite the fact that it looks like he is doing really well. 
Yeah. Because his phone board his lights up. up. People yep. are actually calling. People There's interaction for listen. a 2 o'clock in the morning radio show. Yeah. That's saying something. People are listening, obviously. We do find out that all of those complaints that the producer was holding up do, in fact, matter. Mm-hmm. And do, in fact, add up and, and are his downfall. Yeah. He's got one too many or or the last one was too big. They don't really specify. Don't really specify. But because of the complaints, he's now going to get fired. When Leon hears this from the producer, he acts like it's a joke. He's like, my buddy, this so, is this was Eugene Levy coming in, yeah, uh, Mr. Kent, Mr. Right? Kent, the the station manager. Yeah. He's like, I, I, Look, rat- he's my buddy. He's not. He ratted him out to the FCC yeah. in the son of a bitch. He's like, he's not gonna, he's not gonna. Oh, he just gets a little mad sometimes. Don't worry he's about it. He's not gonna it. do anything he, to me. It'll We're be fine. okay. It'll be all good. And I got this little poem I want to read on the air. <laughs> right, this is this poem, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, like you said, the the whole reason they're there is because Mr. Kent, he, the owner of the radio station, won't do it. Yep. Obviously, it's a woman. We get yeah, told. So we like, can assume because he's like, I don't see what she sees. In we him. can assume we know. We know he's the ladies' man. Yeah, but so he was like, so I called in the complaints. My, you know, I yep. called them in to tip them off. Yeah, about the complaints myself. Fine, and you're done. And so he got told by Julie, like, look, we can't. Yeah, and he's our, like, this is our jobs. He's like, look, look, okay, that's fine. I know what to do. Play don't, a little don't, music. You play some sp- soft music. Yep. For me, don't let no more calls through. I've got this. I'm just gonna do he my sign off. He grabs this paper off like he's had it in his pocket. He's right. been waiting to do this. He thought this was the breaking case of emergency. Right. Right. This was the break glass part. Right. Like, this bing. is this was what he did. This, I got this. This is he the best thought this thing. was a thing that was gonna save the day. And it's this poem, and it starts off. It sweet. starts off so great, dude. It's so good, and like and, it but cuts again, to all the people. Kind of like all a, like cuddling and starting to kiss. Well, kind of like his vision. Yeah. Earlier, it's, it starts off really good. Really. Good. Right, and then it kind of devolves into the gibberish, and then at the end, and of then it, it gets just sexual, like, just like his vision, dude. And don't forget, hold your lover close, and then do it in the butt. <laughs> and then, like, kind of, like my favorite and was the, the old man. Well, he just like smacks the stereo. So, well, do it in the butt, and then since he was reading a personal poem, he then says, "Leon Phelps." By Leon Phelps. <laughs> Thank you and good night, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and again, completely oblivious, just like just like seventeen year old Leon. Yeah, was, this is a thumbs up thumbs from Leon, up, smiling like, see, like I did it right. It's all good, right? He's looking at Julie. Yeah, yeah, it's no, fantastic. Fired. Immediately, we we don't even get a cut to hear that he's fired. No. We just see him wasted because he's so, so drunk, drunk from, because he got fired. Yeah. And, and Julie's being the responsible one, taking him, taking care of him to his his, his sweet houseboat, houseboat, the skanksuary, the skanksuary. Yeah, this is this is where all the magic happens. Well, I love the first time right now. We're in the boat. We don't actually get to see it, but later we actually see it's on, on the, the boat. boat. It says a little skanksuary. Little sign says it is it's, well, it's, you know, like it's not the SS minnow. This no. is the skank. There's no no SS. No, it's this just, is the just Skanksuary. The Skanksuary. It is, it is the actual it call is name of the boat. Full of you most open the door, gaudy look, 70s tat. It's awesome. You you open the door and this is fucking um uh Snodgrass. Can't remember his fake name. You know what I'm saying? It's the older brother, right? <laughs> yeah, the from, older brother. It's it's his room, right? It's his like, room. It's, it's it totally is his room from, kind of 70s. from Spirit of 76. Yeah. There it is. I got it. But yeah, it's yeah. 100% totally like that room, right? Like, I mean, it's total. But it's like the hustle. On a houseboat. The, the, it's got the same. I think it has the same fucking, like, fucking little It's definitely sign in it's the, the 70s wood paneling. Yeah, it's uh, so awesome. It's got a waterbed on a boat. <laughs> it's got a titty remote controller. I didn't see that. That's what she picks up. Oh, dude. is that what it was? I didn't she, know it was a remote control. I thought it was just a toy. No, it was a remote control. And then you flip the top and that's the power button. Oh, and all the stuff came up out of the yeah. bed and shit. Yeah. Oh, I thought he pushed a button. No, she did it. Damn it. This is what happens when you're writing notes. It, it was very crazy, very wild. He's drunk. He's passed out basically he's already. He's still trying to make moves, man. But she's just like laughing it off. Like, no, man, you ain't getting none tonight. He half sobers up when she pushes the button to raise the bar like it like, yep. like it woke something up in him and he was like well because when the bar raises up the way it sat normally the liquor part was always Over, visible yeah you right? could see the booze but then when it raised up to show what would be should be more liquor for yeah. any normal person like you would keep the really good yeah. shit here it raises up and he's got sex gels and and body massage oils lotions and, and probably toys but they're not in camera yeah. it's a very different thing but that's what excited she him that's she what woke holds him up. up the fuzzy we, handcuffs. She goes, where do you even buy most of this stuff? Is it, you know, Kmart, Walmart, Walmart mostly. <laughs> this boat, though, does reinforce the fact that he was raised by uh, a like a seven, Hugh Hefner yeah, type. Yeah, like a Hugh Hefner right? type. Because this straight up looks like if you would have told me that in the 70s there was a Playboy cruise. 
Yeah. This is what I would this tell is you. Definitely it what like. one of the this suites. is what the decor looked like. Yep, this is definitely one of the suites on that boat. But yeah, you're right. He at this point is when he starts to still try to hook up with her. He yeah. starts to and as soon as he starts trying to hit on her, she again, much like earlier, she's yep. like, That's my call. Yep. Deuces. I'm going home. home. That was never the intention she, here. She was starting to like take help him get like his uh, shit off and she took one shoe off and he's like, You trying to seduce me? She, she drops like, nope. his foot like nope. That no, is on not that at note, all what on happens. that note, I am definitely leaving yep now we get a hard cut this time though we see barney going crazy on the internet right yeah, early is, internet early internet he's he's trying to he's find like chat rooms and, and he's like trying to find boards. people like he's like who who's smiling vi- ass he's smiling like, ass tattoo man with smiling ass tattoo he, victims of smiling he ass. stumble he stumbles on to the vsa ah the victims of the smiling ass a vigilante group that will have their revenge super crazy to think about like for that era right? right like a group of it does it's very dark web in the creepiest kind of way too yeah. right like i mean because i don't know about you but in like 2000s if i had stumbled onto a group of people like that i'd have been like i don't know what you guys are doing but, but i definitely out. know it's sinister yep i am I'm going to leave this website and hope right? the fbi never looks through my computer and finds out that i was here because right? i wasn't i wasn't part of this i don't know what these fucking guys were doing <laughs> I don't know who Smiling Ass is or why they want revenge on it. But I have, nope. I will nope my way away from this whole situation. Yep. But he's all intrigued. He's like, oh, well, yeah. They're like me. There's others. That's another what? hard cut. It just cuts what? to them doing like the inter- going to interviews. Yeah. Well, this one's at least pseudo connected because the last thing she says the night before was that they needed to be looking for. You know, tomorrow's Tomorrow, new the job, job looking. Start. Yeah. yeah, the job. So there's starts. at least gonna, the fact that we transitioned into the Barney moment for 30 seconds. Yeah, it's really short. Into it is weird. Yeah. That scene could have been after he hung up they, on the phone with him. They could have, him. He could have made all of these together. Right. Yeah. Like a longer Barney scene and then a longer joined scene of this. Yeah. Instead of separating them. The way he separated them. Yep, very true. That would have been better. That's, yeah, that's more than that, That's all editing. And it makes the cuts feel harder because of that. Yeah. Because we're disjointedly jumping. Back jumping. And forth. Yeah. So now's the part where we get to what, in a lot of movies, would have been a montage, but this movie was already too short, so they couldn't <laughs> montage it. I which guess. is the part where he's they're trying to find a new place to work. Uh, so we get to see like a, little, a slightly longer cuts for every job than right. you might normally we get, see. We, we, he has a tape. Well, yeah, the very first job, it's funny. It's an actual popular radio yep, station it's one of the it big would ones. technically be a move up for them yeah right because before they were on a financial station. this is at least like a station people are listening to all day and yeah. you know like it uh, might get them extra listeners dude's very excited he's like i've never listened to your stuff but I've i know heard of you. i know people are very into your show yeah he was very into him but then he mentioned celine dion i have no idea who that is <laughs> the guy was just like what what i don't know how the okay. hell do you not know especially after titanic everybody knew who the fuck that bitch was uh but he's like yeah he's says uh yeah i've i've heard a lot about you from from people people know who you are so that's always a good sign i got tape here you can listen to the show and stuff and it is horrible it's all about like doing it in the butt it's doing it in the but i think i i think i got a Did few you write of any of it now I, I got a few of them doing it doggy it's, style Full doggy style, then then ball sacks, <laughs> and then uh, more butt stuff. This is the only part that goes lo- real quick. He get they get thrown out the first one, then we can see another one or two places where yeah, it's ball sack, and ball then this sack, where, more doggy stuff. Uh, but then they get tossed out from the last one, and Julie straight up says, "Just give me the tape." And she's just like tearing the fucking. That's the only tape I have. Now my only problem with this is. As we established earlier, we don't know how long Julie's been his producer. Couldn't be more than two years. We know that much. Yeah. But she's at least been his producer for a year. Yeah. Right? We can we can all she, agree yeah. on that. Yeah. At least. A year. She sat through a lot of his shows. What the hell did she think a tape reel of a show would be? Other yeah, than she, why talks. Is she surprised. Other than talks of butts That's and a ball good sex. Point. I didn't think of that. Why the fuck is she so goddamn surprised about it? That's the only thing that the reel could have been. Yeah. Have you? She's right there. She listens to the fucking show. It shouldn't be a shock. You have no right to be fucking mad. You oh, shouldn't yeah. have gave him the tape. Because uh, you know he don't know how to make that tape. She had to make the tape for him. Yeah. 
Sorry, I realized earlier I, I was wrong. There are five kids in the hall because the Praise Jesus Together guy is one of the kids in the hall, too. This is what uh, I'm saying. Dude. They're, they are. They're all in this movie. I'm telling you. I'm pretty sure. Everything but Dave, everybody but Dave Foley. Dave Foley is the only one that's not. The, the news radio guy. Oh, no, Scott's not there either. Scott Thompson. The other three are here. All in one little tight spot here, though. Really, if you think about it, because the mailman. Yeah, wrote, he's coming up here in a minute, isn't he? All right. After the little, the the brief moment there, we get another long portion of job interview. Yeah. Much like the first one with the Celine Dion stuff. This time, though, it's for no tape. No tape. So we don't got to worry about the reel messing it up for him. Yeah. Uh, we don't see what it's for. Not yet. Until the end. And we just see what looks like successful interview. Yeah, happening. they're going to get a job. Hell yeah. They're gonna uh, be on the radio. It's not going to be permanent. It's he got a told he's morning like, show, even. Yeah, it's a, it's a fi- they're filling in because someone had to leave. There's no guarantee that this is a permanent spot but they can try and if it works they'll keep them on and then as he stands up and says that's great i'm glad we'll have you we see the sign behind him it's the pjtr did you catch what that was all for it's a some christian radio network i didn't praise jesus together radio the perfect place for for leon dude like even when they were getting hired julie was looking nervous she was eyeballing the fuck out of leon like I'm not Say a word. Look, look, if we're going to play this game of chicken, we're going to play this game of chicken. I won't be the one to tell them, but you're going to be okay with this. And then we see them sitting in the radio station together. Yep, doing his first he show. He is nervous as fuck. He He's a- worried. He's trying. He, I will at least give him credit. He's trying. He wants to be on his best behavior. He really does. He really, really does. He is, he is sweating with this the effort. This nun. I can't believe that. <laughs> She's not helping him at well, all. <laughs> look, I understand that he was a fill-in. They're, they're like substitute hosts for whatever. Yeah, because somebody. But if you're interview. a substitute host, no, if you're a substitute host, you don't do the interview. That's true. You shouldn't you the, shouldn't have had him interview the, the nun. The dude would have called this nun and said, look, we can't do it today. Regular you have to wait. not here. Yeah. You would not have still let someone who doesn't know her, had no questions prepared. Yeah. If I was the nun, I would have been like, I'm not interviewing this. this I, well, is I'm not, not what we letting discussed. him interview me. Yeah. yeah. I don't know this asshole. But no, we get this nun and, and he has to interview this nun. And you're right. She does not make it easy on him. I do have these. I have all you of have these. You have all of these? Have every Go. questionable sex thing that she says she immediately starts it up by saying that she is going to be taking a missionary position Ooh. in bangkok Ooh. where she will be taking it all in Ooh. it's awful hot and steamy there oh yeah you ever been down the yellow river mm, once in the 80s but i didn't like it you love the joys <laughs> of a missionary position i mean it's kind of fun but um so yes she hits a lot of really dirty sexual things in a very <laughs> short amount of time worse for you. he's getting worked up by it he's just it's like, like, it's like it's like a drug you mean it's like somebody just waved the back in front of him and he just starts going off into the story about like these two twins and shit well this is my problem right like he could have done this without getting dirty. He could have. All she said is, have you ever enjoyed the joys of a missionary position? He could have answered that in a lot of ways that still meant it's sex. Simple, yes. She wouldn't have known it. But he, instead of just saying, yes, I love the many aspects a very, of a it, missionary position. Yeah, it's a right? very versatile, very good position. There are you lots know? of things he could have done where this still worked, right? Everybody loves a good missionary. But no, he hits it dirty. dirty. He jumps into this awful fucking story. This is one of those moments where, like, it catches you off guard. Like, uh, <laughs> there are a few in the movie where you're like, whoa. You're like, oh, this ain't the SNL skit. No, yeah, no, this is this is this, this is oh, this like is a, why it's rated R. Yeah, this is a whole new beast right now. And this was definitely, yeah, this was right? one of those moments because he starts telling the raunchiest story. And he's just like, I guess you could call it kind of a missionary position. That's, and that was my other problem with it. I was like, it wasn't even missionary. There's Nothing something he about said. Like a light, there's something about like a telescopic pole and, a, and like a, oh. a fucking camera tripod and shit. So obviously they get fired. Oh, he gives the nun a heart attack. There's an ambulance no, showing this up. This is great because they no one says it out loud and we don't see that. We just get the implication that that's what right. happened because the nun gasped she gasped hard we know they're fired they're walking out the building ambulance pulls up police, police car pull up. pulls up but they are still walking away would the police We're not have stopped yeah they would have been like no come the fuck back here we have questions what did you do to this yeah. nun but no instead we just can see it all happen in the back in the background like the police show up completely like that's all like the the ambulance at least pulls up like while it's like all tight in frame yeah. right 
The police, though, is solidly in the background. Right. Like, didn't need to be there at all. Totally the, the police extra. car is like a couple of seconds into the scene even. Yeah. It's like, oh, there's a cop car even. So but Julius such a nice chewing touch. his ass out. Yeah. This was, we're never going to work in radio again. This is it. You messed it up. Well, and and she says, well, I mean, I, I guess I can call in a favor from my ex, fucking Cyrus. But I don't. And he, I he, he's he, like, yeah, and he yeah, was I even like, do you don't, don't do that. You don't want to do that. that. Fuck Nobody's that doing that. Fuck yeah. Cyrus. Fuck this. We're not like, doing well, what that. do you expect? What's our plan? What are we going to freaking do? And she walks off all pissed off. And he's just like, I'm going to do what I always do. Please do. I will have sex. And then I will wait for something to randomly happen. And then it cuts to him having. He's like, all right, I had sex. You're missing my favorite part of what he yelled at her, though. He goes, it will all work out. It will all randomly work out. <laughs> I just Because it that, always that, does. I just love that. That's what he yells at her. This is where we get our mail. Yes. Yeah. So he does. He does have sex, uh, and he walks out the next morning to get the mail. And this is the random occurrence that he was waiting for, but not before the mailman gives him shit. Yes, well, it gives him shit, and we, we see a few things. We get no setup for this. None. Is this supposed to be a long-standing feud like between it. the two of them? It Are they seems, always talking really shit to each like other it. like this? Because if not, if this was the first day on the job, and that's how he came to you? Because as soon as he fucking walks up, the mailman's just like, oh, God, fucking, yeah, like, fucking yeah, he's boat like, guy. This guy, yeah, yeah, fucking boat guy. I love that fucking boat guy. And after after our angry uh, disgruntled mailman walks away, that's the kind of guy who shoots a place up. That's why they call it going postal. But yeah, so then we see Leon going through the mail. Right, this was so funny to me. Uh, doctor bill, bill into the water, gas bill into the water, Light house bill. rent bill into the water, light bill, all of it. He's just tossing bills. Boat payment into the water, and then he pulls one up and like, oh. What's this? A lady. (laughs) Gets him a nice little love note from some rich lady he had sex with in a laundromat. And she wants him back. And he's like, this is it. Literally, not just that she wants him back. She's promising him money. Oh, yeah. That's the kicker here. All the money. Leon don't care. Women come for Leon all the time. It's that money. He's a ladies My man. My problems are solved. I'm rich now. Right, that was the thing. That was he was looking for the random occurrence. This was his random occurrence. <laughs> you get a rich lady going to take care of all my problems. But the only problem, it's just signed. Sweet thing. Like Leon has and he even he says it to himself out loud. Like I have, I have any, any idea, idea who, who that, that is. is. He says that to everybody. Yeah, well cuz we don't see it yet, but later that they have that moment, you're right. Yeah, where Julie is like, "Well, we just got I mean, it can't be that many." How many she and says you immediately sweet calls thing. like six people sweet thing. All right, no fucking few seconds and shit while he's you're eating right. his pancakes. At this point though, even though he uh has gotten the letter and technically knows that his problems are solved, he still is at least right now caring about Julie. This kind of yeah. changes later. A little bit. Later he doesn't care if Julie's problems are solved too. But right now he does. So yeah. again, she he was so upset. They tried every radio station in town, but they really hadn't. There's Cyrus and his tiny pee-pee. And his tiny three-inch pee-pee. Which the ladies and shit in the fucking behind him pop for. They're like, what the fuck? Oh, that was a small scene too, yeah, wasn't it? They're, it's super small. They're just at the diner and he, Again, and she, he and shows her the note. And we don't go back to that one. No. Yeah. I didn't even notice how weird that one was until I'm looking at my notes. I'm like, I have three lines. Yeah, that's it. That's that whole fucking scene. Okay. On to Barney. I guess so. Barney I he, guess so. He drives up to the really fancy, like, it looks like a Mason's Lodge. It like, is like definitely where you, some kind yeah. of lodge or something. It is our very creepy VSA meeting. I'm sure he told them he was coming. It's not like they got a lot of members, but it's yeah. weird that Lance, right? That's the yeah, same. Lance, Will Ferrell Will plays Ferrell's Lance. Lance. Lance DeLune. Lance DeLune. Uh, but yeah, it's real weird that Lance opens the door and immediately is like, we know who you are, Barney. You're one of us. That was Come creepy. in. That was weird. It really was. I would have walked back out the door. I'm like, yeah, no, this is weird. I'm going to go some skull and bone shit. All the people start telling us that they were victims. The, the They've all seen the smiling ass. They're telling us the year and, and yeah, when and it they, happened. And it, it, uh, uh, But as we go down the, the line of all these people telling their stories, we finally end and it's it's Lance telling us he's the longest, like, not, right? It's it's the hair club for men thing, right? Yeah. It's like, not only am I a Not member, only am I a founder, I'm, I'm the, a member too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm one of you. And so he's like, I, I've, I, I'm the person who's been afflicted the longest. We technically don't find that out till 
later, right? Yeah. Like he, 1990. We do know when it happened to him. We just don't actually hear anybody else give us an earlier date. Yeah, I don't think so. But there is that when, one when guy. Was, that one guy. It's just like he's multiple, multiple times. Multiple yeah, times. No, he, it's like you, every time you think he's gonna stop, he, he throws just another keeps one. going. We hear the most uh, about Lance's though, right? Like yep. it happened when he was on the. He was a. Uh, he was gonna be the. He was gonna be on the Olympic. Wrestling, wrestling team, team. Greco-Roman. Greco-Roman. <laughs> I'm a master, and I was training so hard with my uh, training partner, and then he Brian. Just, every time he talks, it gets super homoerotic. It's very homoerotic. Very homoerotic. Uh, obviously, He's obvious really, implications. Really, really we into wrestling. We can clearly see why his wife maybe was kind of looking around for other shit. Because she's definitely not getting it from she him. She was definitely feeling jealous he of Brian. He doesn't throw me around like he does Brian. Yeah, feeling <laughs> jealous of Brian. Um, definitely. They're doing more than wrestling. We can see from some of these guys and what they say. Oh, they automatically all get like uncomfortable when he starts talking well, about not it even every just time. Him, kinda like, I mean, in general, like when they all start talking about their problems. Yeah. We can hear already that they don't hear it, but we can hear why yeah, maybe you this guys might be the problem. He's not the bad guy they think. He's just kind. Of, I mean, he is, but he's he is. Not, not as bad as they all think he is. He's not going he out didn't there steal nobody's wives. They came to him. Yeah, well, and it was never his intention. Yeah, he wasn't hunting. He wouldn't be like he wasn't I'm hunting. Go in and he wasn't a hunting for like women with rings. Right? Yeah, like I mean, that was. Just, Happened to be them. Well, and they happen to usually either come on to him or he just said hello. And what's he going to do? Say no? Well, no, because he's a ladies he's man. He's a ladies man. Ladies man never says no. We're going to take care of the ladies. That's a fun drinking game for this episode every time we say ladies. Before this little meeting wraps up, though, we get the... This is my favorite thing that Barney says about Leon. He pulls out the pants and he goes, But wait, guys, I got one more piece of information. He's a, a clown. He's a clown. Because Look the at clothes. these pants. Look at these clothes. They're like, yeah, we, we know whole, about the clothes. There's a huge pile of them. The clothes never really and lead they, anywhere. They all look absolutely insane because he does. He wears some pretty. He wears some outlandish 70s clothes, man. But this time, a they lighter. get a bigger clue. The lighter falls out of the pocket. Ladies, man. It says ladies, man on it. Big clue. Now they all got something to actually work from. Right. And it's not hard to find out a, you know, relatively well-known radio personality under that name. Yeah. Well, we'll get more to that. Again, since this guy jumps all over the place. Yeah, he does. We gotta we gotta go to where he jumps next. And so he does not jump there. He jumps to us seeing them no longer care about the job hunt. Now they're looking for sweet thing. Yep, that's what he's doing. He's got a map. He's gonna send scrap iron oh. off to like Malaysia or something. I know that we both have already commented and we know that this is jumping all over the place. But again, should we not have just gone ahead and done the Cyrus scene? Yeah, it should have just went straight into this to and then, Julie bringing then Cyrus do some in. of the women. Yeah, and hunt? then done this. Okay, the ordering of events are a little. Oh, I kind of hate it when we have to do this. We have to like super analyze shit. Yeah, and we break need to stop right down. now. Yeah, yeah. Let's... <laughs> Let's get back onto this. So we're with Leon. He's going on a hunt. He's going for the first woman he thinks is a sweet thing. It is not. It is a woman who opens the door and is very angry at him for even talking, talking to her. Talking to her. Because apparently they hooked up in the bathroom at a Chuck E. Cheese and he well, never and, called her back. But then she almost seems into him until he says that he thinks. He's like, no way. We had sex in a laundromat. That's what you wrote in the letter here. And she's like, motherfucker, what letter? Yeah, well, and then she quickly is like, I, was, I wasn't I was going to get back with you anyway. And I was like, I don't know. That conversation I mean, in the middle seemed. Yeah, a little ambiguous there toward that middle bit. You say what you want. Until he said the laundromat thing. Until were, he was like, this isn't the same person? Right? Like, you ain't the bitch I'm looking for. That's when you changed your fucking tune. And she throws him out, and he's just like, ah. And he walks, like, two well, doors over. He walks to the elevator, and then looks down at his list, and then goes, oh. Oh. He's, like, two doors down from that chick's He's like, house. oh, I can... Two birds, one stone. Right. Happened ah, in the same building. Nice. Teresa. Don't you just want to know the story behind that moment? And then he goes to like the chick at her wedding. Yes. And it's tough. And he's just like, oh, it ain't you? Oh, okay. okay. I Sorry. smack her on the ass. She liked that. And then he turns to one of the bridesmaids like, you, you? you did you write this? Because they're everywhere, man. <laughs> I love that shit. The wedding was my favorite bit. But now we get the Cyrus yeah, now scene. now we get Cyrus. And again, to me, we should have just done Cyrus first, then, then, then put all of these. Because there's more yeah. of them later yeah we so we could all together all but of them. well if they were all together then it would have been a montage and they would uh, shorten it and the movie wouldn't have been long enough we figured it there out there it is it's still a dumb reason to do it, it but is. i guess it's a reason but they had to stretch it out somehow i guess because it's only what 100 and it's it's like an hour it's 20 an hour and 20 it's yeah. not even an hour and a half and that's again there's credits in there short yeah, quick movie everyone should watch 
Yeah, so the Cyrus scene, though, is absolutely one of my favorite, right? So Cyrus is basically like, look, look, I might be able to hook you up with a job. But then he starts talking some smack to Julie. Yeah, if Leon's you want, like, if you want a temp job, is like this girl who yeah. thought she could be a producer and shit. And Leon's like, dude, bitch, don't talk and to her that goddamn yeah, way. Leon says, look, I don't know what you thought you were going to do up in my bar. Yeah, this is my area, motherfucker. But you weren't going to come up in here and talk to her like that. And Cyrus quickly is like, See, what's he say? He's like, uh, he's like, don't let the... Look, don't let nice. the smooth don't let the smoothness fool you. I'm, I'm from, from the, the streets. streets. And then Leon hits him with the used to be from the streets. I'm still from the streets. I sleep sometimes in, I wake up yeah, on like, them sometimes streets. Sometimes I wake up in the streets, you know? And Basaris is like, all right, well, let's go the fuck outside, right? And for a half second, you think Leon's gonna take him up on it, but then he's like, oh, no, I'm a lover, not a fighter. Let let's have it like a peace offering. I'm sorry. Like you like you like pickled pickled pig's feet? You want to try some pickled pig's feet? This is starts the grossest well, eating competition in movie history. It's so gross. It, it ends this. grosser than most of it. Like, most of it's not that offensive. It's I just a bunch of pickled of it. shit. It's, so it's gross. a bunch of pickled I stuff. pickled shit. Uh, I mean, I don't want to eat it, but I'm just Ugh. saying, like, it doesn't bother me that people so gross. do. But yeah, it starts with, it start, starts with the pickled pig feet. And he eats it like it's nothing. He's like, oh, y- y'all thought I wasn't going to eat this? Yeah. Y'all thought I was too good oh, to eat some I was of this? Gonna, like, I was raised up on this stuff. I ain't too good for this stuff. And so then that's when he's like, oh, you, you want to do some pickled eggs? And even Cyrus says it right then. And that, that's even before it goes very far. Right. He immediately is just like, we, got, we just got to keep eating the pickled shit? Yeah, two we pickled can't, things? We can't have something else? We can't do something different? I mean, that's when you notice he looks out the, there's literally a menu there's a menu <laughs> and it's just all, all pickled. pickled stuff and it was just uh, like oh okay then they pull out the prairie oysters no did you hear what did you yes. you know what that is it's nothing good i don't want to know do you, i want to know you know what a rocky mountain oyster is it's testicles yes so these would be sheep testicles there you go mm, yummy it could still be bull it all depends on what prairie you're on yeah i guess so prairie dog <laughs> little tiny ones <laughs> it wouldn't be that <laughs> little, i hope little, little itty bitty those testicles. things that were hit the table were big <laughs> yeah they were jesus christ it's so gross i hate this scene but cyrus is like not gonna back down from oh, any wait, of wait, it wait. he's just like this ain't nothing bring it on let's keep going so no, we bring wait, out the but before, I, before we go too far i want to say this i want to point this out when they pulled out those uh testicles right as if it's it's already nasty and it looks nasty did you hear scrap iron he said look like chitlins to me look like chitlins to me and i was like no. no, like I don't want to eat either one. But I know what chitlins look like, and that's not what those look no, like. No, those things look so squid, the Ugh, squidgy they, looking. They looked like they were just like cartilage. It looked. Ugh. Okay, we gotta stop. We gotta stop. <laughs> we'll throw up. On, no, <laughs> we'll throw up on the fucking podcast. Uh, then they pull out the spicy hog balls. Mmm, baby, love me some spicy hog balls. <laughs> but once they eat hey, the spicy, Leon, Leon's just like, oh, oh, I got two here. They didn't yeah. go right in the mouth. Oh, and once they eat the spicy hog balls, though, that's when they start to. Cyrus is like, I'm done. He's like, what? What is? That's it. That, I mean, there, what's I'm left? I'm looking at the menu. There's nothing. There's nothing left. I, I handled your food. You thought I was. You guys, go- you guys thought I couldn't do it. Yeah. Fuck all y'all. And they're like, oh, but we got one more. It's special. It's new. It's ain't even on the menu yet. Mm-hmm. This was a line too far, dude. This was so fucked. I was so disgusted by it, I didn't even write down the fake name they told him whatever something it was. Something gristle. Some kind of gristle poppers or gristle something. Gristle bits or something like that. But it's straight poop. It's, it's, they took. Human shit and it's pickled straight poop it. in a jar. It's poop in a jar, and this it's, poor bastard ate it. For a visual reference, it's straight poop in like one of those Lutz pretzel plastic <laughs> jars, right? Yeah, it's disgusting. Oh. Cyrus eats it, and they're, and they're all, all just, laughing. They're all just like, they're busting up, and he's just like, "What? What? what? I did it. I ate your damn I did, food. I, I, I did. Like, I, I passed all your tests." Fucking scrap iron, just like you ate shit. That's exactly what you ate. You ate human shit. And you just <laughs> ate human feces. That's what you did. And he gets up. And he's all like, he goes and runs away and shit. I mean, fuck Cyrus, but god damn no, that dude i look i got problems that's with a people. little fire that's a little making far. someone eat any kind of human excrement pee poop anything, that's too far that, uh, i know he's a dick but yeah I mean, maybe beat the shit out of him don't make him eat shit like, no one really deserves that not for that minor of no. an offense no but so now we've officially gotten to the point where they have no radio stations left to work at yep because the last chance they had was going to be cyrus they just literally fed shit to their last chance so it's it, that that's done. So at this point, the only hope technically either of them have is for him to find this woman. And hopefully he's rich enough to take care of Julie, too. 
Yeah, <laughs> I guess just like she's my assistant. She's my side piece. Yeah, he's the kind of guy that would just yeah. be upfront about it. I look, there's enough of Leon to go around for right? both of you. Come fine on, ladies. now. Come on, don't make me. You fine lady number one, you pay for everything, and you fine lady can, number two. In case you, you guys forgot, I can drop trow again to show right? you. Oh, it sings even when uh, he pulls it out. Now that you mentioned singing, though, that's a great segue to our next scene because that's it's the moment where the guys. My favorite part of the movie. The the VSA the they're, show they're, up uh, all of them. Van Jeep. They show up. Uh, Big Humvee and everything. This is like A Team style. Yeah, dude. Right? They roll in go. like they got fucking weapons, shotguns, they, and all they this shit. Jump out of the vehicle and into song. Yep. Will into Ferrell musical. Rallies them up and then we start our big Broadway fucking well, song. This and dance. got to me so bad because i was like dude couldn't we at least have gone like uh west side story couldn't we have been like no no we go full broadway with this shit man these guys go crazy they, well, they like, had to show their supreme manliness and what they? manlier oh, way so masculine. than to dance and, and prance your way down the hallway of a radio <laughs> station jazz hands and all baby <laughs> i was gonna say the last guy that did the flip <laughs> up into the jazz hands oh, oh man it's so good they make their way into the radio station again this is the first radio station he's yeah, not worked here he for, doesn't work here for like a week now hey, Exactly. The the boss upstairs was immediately like, no. Yeah, no, I fired him a week but ago. This is his name and where you can find him. He lives on this houseboat. They he also even, hangs out at this bar. Yeah, he even hangs out at this bar. I was bar. like, whoa, dude. Like, you would get arrested so fast for telling some people this. For for telling a gang of people Arm with gang. weapons. They have guns. <laughs> you would so be arrested when they found out you yep. told someone this. But it's, it's a okay. comedy. Don't worry about Don't it. Don't worry. It's all good. We don't got to worry. They, even, they apologize, though. They're like, oh, well, sorry we bothered you. And then they all kind of fuck off to the houseboat, right? Yep. But before we see them on the houseboat, we just Leon see Leon's next looking. guest. He's, he's still looking. He's, his next guest, again, like we said, jumps around into weird parts. Could have tied this all together. This is when we see Julianne Moore. Full clown. Full she, clown. We don't know she's a clown when it first starts. We yeah, just, it just seems like she's like going to go do a stage just, yeah, performance. She's doing some kind of stage and she, performance. And she goes to a change behind one of those little wardrobe right. things partitions so, and she's like we should have a quickie for old time's sake and he's like ah, i mean i like that idea and okay. then she pops out and she's all full, full fucking clown. clown and he's like i don't think i so. don't think that's a good idea but now. then she even talks him into it she hops up on him and she starts like dry humping him and she's squeaking her little horn yeah. just squeak 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 yolo squeak, squeak, squeak. yolo i guess hey man then why not right <laughs> I mean, Julianne Moore, I'd fuck her dressed as a clown. I don't care. Now's when we slide to the, the houseboat. Boat. Yeah. No one's They're home. still singing. They There's, are singing. Dude, they sing the whole rest of the time. Going to the fucking yeah. boat. One dude comes out clicking the shotgun, busts their way into the houseboat. There's nobody there. They <laughs> killed the waterbed, though. Did you see yeah, that? Yeah, because well, he shot the shotgun shot, to, yeah, to blow the, the door lock open. open. They're like, they're looking at it and they're like, oh. Uh, For a split second, you can tell they're all kind of like, well, well that wasn't fuck. really my intention. Yeah, like, what the fuck? What Trying to mess his stuff up. I didn't, this, he's got some nice stuff. One guy's even like, I mean, it's classy. I like it. <laughs> but then uh, Lance pulls out his cigar, lights, and he's like, Let's torch well, it. We torch it. Throws, throws it, it down. Boom. Yeah, I mean, this place goes up. Goes so up. Quick. It goes up so fast. They're just all like, Run! Cheap, cheap <laughs> cologne and, and body and, oil. And, and the shit. booze all have just made this massive napalm like right? concoction. This, this fucking boat is a bomb ready to just explode. And it takes it no time to and fucking burn. And everybody kind of seems like, uh, We may guys, have gone too far. I, none of them call it no but, but they're, they're all thinking it you see it on a lot of their because they're all just kind of on the on the shore just watching the boat burn like yeah we yeah. might we might have gone too far here even barney yeah he's the one who's got the gun ready yeah. to shoot fucking and he's still and he's a standard like i didn't mean to mess up his stuff like that it was kind of a nice boat and they roll f straight from there over to the bar right yep straight to the bar now did you notice though i want to say like when we see uh the door open to the bar it's daylight I didn't notice. No, it, sucks it was for a dark split when, the, when, the yes, bar, it was, when the boat was burning. And so I was like, so I don't understand how much time or what it is. Well, they're still singing, right? They sat there all night, watched the boat burn. Got That's back, all I can guess got is they watched in it. formation That's all and I can sang guess. to the bar. Uh, but yeah, they bust into the bar and they're demanding to know where Leon is because they're gonna kill him. Lester's trying to be good, dude. Yeah, he's, he's like he's yelling uh, because Leon is gonna, indeed there. You're gonna kill Leon. A, a guy named Leon felt you say uh, I don't know a Leon Phelps that you all want to kill and Leon's like got you uh -huh. he's like trying to sneak out, out and stuff 
it. And then they say something about his dick being small, and he they, whips around like, hey, my motherfucker, my dick ain't small. They, the best part about that is that, that they play it as the shaft joke, right? right? Like, it's literally the, don't you talk about shaft? And you're like... <laughs> He's a bad, shut your mouth. Right. It's, <laughs> and so they're like, yeah, him and his three inch pink. Man, don't you talk about my dick like that. Yeah, that's exactly how it plays. And then mm. they're like, get him. And he has to run. Yeah. And he jumps on the, he's on a bus, right? And escapes. Yep. Ah. But but they get his little black book. You know, they show his it earlier. He's already made book. the photocopies. Little, little. It's a fucking encyclopedia. And he's added like 16 times to Right. He's just got pages falling out of it and post-it notes and shit. Well, and I don't understand how that was supposed to be in any way helpful for them and most addresses? of these are but most of these are women he's never gonna they don't know he's on know a, their damn names well and they don't know he's on a mission to go oh yeah talk that's to true. Them. They, these guys specifically it helps yeah. it doesn't help them at all does it why would that be helpful to them most of these women he never talks to again yeah but, i don't know but lance acts like it's the most it's useful the thing in the We've world got him now you see what i mean i mean the only way that's true is if he opens it to a random page and goes Huh, that's my wife's phone number. Well, no, that's not helpful because he, he knows. Never mind. They're all part of the VSA. That's the dude. whole reason yeah. for this. But yeah, so after this, we see that Leon tries to go to his houseboat. That's he's right. On the, he's up. like yeah. crying on the rowboat. And he's like, what I do to deserve this? And my then, boat. Like, much like we've seen every other time something tragic happens to him, he gets wasted. He just gets shit-faced wasted. And wakes up on Julie's parents' Doorstep. Porch, and yeah. they're like poking him with a stick like, and what shit. Is this? And he's just like scratching his ball. Yeah. And, ah, yeah. But then we see him inside and he has sweet talked his they love him. completely won them over. Is this, and you can hear the conversation. He's not being anybody but himself. Yeah. He's being perverted. He's being a charming pervert. <laughs> like he should notice that Julie yeah. is the right woman for him because should. even her parents she think even, he's great. She even says it here in a little bit. Like you need to find somebody whose parents won't kick you off the porch when they find you drunk. Like mine did. Well, and it's even beyond. They they genuinely like him. Right? He's like, oh, you helped our marriage so much. And why don't you go ahead and stay minutes. here? Like, They're he like, lives why don't you go now. ahead and stay here? He's our son. You you leave, Julie. Fuck you. We're gonna keep fucking Leon. Uh, but then he goes up to her room so they can talk privately. He immediately tells her about his houseboat. He seems very he, okay with this. He gives her shit for her room. He's like, oh yeah, that's right. Remember you giving me shit for my well, houseboat? Rightfully so. Just because you're living with your parents again doesn't mean you have to live like you're a child oh no again. it is definitely her room from when she was like in seventh grade we can assume she's been there for two years yeah right since the wedding fell through yeah that makes sense in two years you've, you've had tried to adultify the yeah. room at least you've had plenty of time to kind of get rid of some of the childish away. stuff that the uber childish right. things right so yeah he has every right to make fun of her for Could this. Take the new kids on the block poster down. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, he seems surprisingly okay with this houseboat though. Yeah. Did you notice that? Like while he's talking to her about it, he's he's not like freaking out. He's not like I it's he's not gone. like I called the cops. It's so yeah, no, we didn't call the cops. He's, he's just, just like, like my houseboat's yeah, my gone. Got gone. nowhere to live. Now I'm here really, with you. So he's like, now I really need to find that lady. Yeah, now I really need to find that rich lady who wants to bang me. Uh he starts to get he blames his wang for yep. a second, right? He's like, this Maybe is, it's this, my wang's this fault. This is the this then is the he where stops. he's tired of being well, the lady's well, man. Well then he stops for a second, right? He's like, It's my wang's fault. And then he looks back at her and he's like, But that's crazy talk. That's crazy talk. I can't blame that. It's not, his, it's not fault. his fault. But then he, the, we get deep for a second too, right? This is when yeah. he, he pulls out the letter and he looks at her and he's like, Julie, you know, I really wish you, you wrote, wrote this letter. letter. And it's she's like, nice. she quickly was like, we have never, never had, had sex. sex. It'd be real hard for us to, for that to happen. But then he gets a little bit more touching. He's like, no, but I just mean like a girl like you. I need to stop chasing after these, these loose women. These skanks, man. That's what they are. They're skanks. I'm sorry. Uh, He's like, I just need a, a good woman like you. And so he's still saying like you. Yeah. And then she's basically like, yeah, me, me. I'm right here. You know, someone who's this, me, someone who's this. Me. And didn't this. and whose parents Me. didn't kick this. you out. Me. 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 This is the first time where it's overtly slapping you in the face that yes, she is interested. Because every other time, like we said, like, yeah, it's a rom com kind of way, maybe, yeah. right? But she definitely also very clearly shoots him down every time. Yes. This is the first time where there is visible, clear She's not shooting him down. She's she is, leading him she like, is hey, saying, dickhead. Hey, I'm right it's here. taking you two years to notice. Right in front of your face. Uh, and he finally catches on. Does he though? For a fucking second. Does he though? They kiss and it's so he nice. He sees the And delune. you think for a second he's like grown. Nope. 
he uh, he sees the I, and again the I, logo they don't give us a reference the logo is the same as the postage stamp on the letter i get it but that's it how does that actually sense memory i guess he just he's like i know that moon shape it's pretty random i guess they had to tie it together somehow so he would remember who bitch is that sent the letter but yeah so he realizes it's got to be in the middle this... of sitting there with julie yes. it's got to be this <sighs> deloon girl he is like, well, I gotta go right now. I gotta get ready. Yep. Devastates her. She is just leaves devastated. Her. Just leaves her right there. In the middle of the like he touching was kissing moment. her a second ago. He calls her. You notice as he leaves Julie's parents' house. They were in a suburb and there was a payphone at the corner. He called her. But you're missing my point. There was a payphone at the corner in the suburbs. Mm -hmm. That's not where payphones were, dude. No. It was it was left over from the 80s. Well, no, it was just they needed convenient because <laughs> Leon stuck in the 70s, so he doesn't have a cell phone. Fuck no, he doesn't even have a pager. He calls our uh, uh the Deloon lady. Honey. Honey, yes. Her honey. name is Honey Deloon. Honey Deloon. He calls Honey from the payphone. Fuck Timp we see that's Tiffany Tim Amber Thiessen. Thiessen. Smoke show. And she's in a bathtub and bubble baths and shit and she's all hot. Oh, I hate it. And she is totally like, look, yes, I totally, everything I said in the letter was true. Mm. I want you. I can't believe you remembered me. He's not going to let her know how crazy it was to find her, but he's he like, yeah, like, yeah, I totally I remember yeah. you. Right away. Immediately. Only person I call. Yeah, it, was the, it was the male's fault why it took so long. Um, but yeah, so he, he she's like, yeah, no, it's all true. We're, I want to, I, I want to I want to take you around the world. We're going to run away together. Go around the trip world. around the world. You go. You gonna pay for that? Sure. Of course. Oh well, then that sounds great, baby. <laughs> and so then we see he makes a trip to the tailor. So he yeah, he's gotta suit. get some new threads. When we see him enter the tailors, we're finally uh, we given fi a glimpse into why he dresses the way he does. It's not just because he thinks it's great style. It's because he buys clothes from a man who, who thinks, thinks it's that's great, a great style. style. He's dressed the exact same way. So every same time way. he goes into the guy's place to say, "Give me the sharpest clothes you have," this dude, this dude this just big dresses Afro him in the seventies, seventies style. Oh, this is actually the most muted outfit he has in the entire the movie. brown the suit. Brown suit, which he goes, looks is really this nice. The, is this the darkest brown you've got? Is it? Is the darkest brown I got? That is German, German chocolate. chocolate. You can't get, get no any darker than, than that. that. All right, it's smooth. I like this. I almost forgot a great line that we jumped over when he was on the phone with her. Right before he got off the phone with her, he hits her with the "I'm gonna go to town on your money." And your ass. And your ass. I love that money came first and she still wasn't insulted. She was like, all right. She okay. knows, hey, man, she knows she's a Well, she's she a did include bitch. it in the letter. Yeah, she did. She made a point so to write it in the letter. So she knew that it was important. After the tailor, we see... Um, he goes to Lester's bar. Yeah, and he's, 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 he's got, letting everybody know what's going he's on. Ready. He found her. He's all bragging about it. I'm going to be rich. Who, who shows up? Julie. Right in the middle of him talking about all this And shit. what does she do? Punches him right in the motherfucking face. He and, deserved it. And then she... Does does exactly the same thing she did as in the wedding dress she thing. grabs, she the, grabs bottle, the bottle sits down just and starts, starts drinking wasted just everybody else at the bar is like oh, oh shit now and like half of them are having the realization like they didn't realize she was into Lee, right like yeah half, they're like half of oh. them are like oh they're having the same realization we just told you guys yeah, that it's the same feeling she had from wedding night she again did we get it again she's having she's like God we get damn, that I knowing for fourth wall break look from billy, billy d, d Williams, though did you see he goes to like he's try and like us, talk to her. And he's, he's like, like, he looks at us and then goes over to, and she just looks at him and he's just like, he does so good in this movie. Oh, he does. For all, the small for, things for the he small does, part, he, he does him great. He's so good in this fucking movie. I had to shout out some Billy D there for a second. We get Leon showing up, Tiffany Amber Thiessen. To this nice ass house and she in is this in this outfit. fucking lingerie, buddy. Fuck. Yeah. Stacks of cash. On the table like she's just, a drug kingpin. They're just like just stacks of They never of hundreds. explain to us why they there are stacks of cash either because she immediately hits Leon with the news that they got to take care of a few yeah, loose ends. You might have to kill my husband. It's no big deal. He's like, oh, well, well, I hope it don't come to that. That you would assume is how she was going to get the money. Why was there cash on the table? Told the insurance company he was already dead. But how would she have a cash? Yeah, that's true. I don't know. You get what I mean? Yeah. It was so random that the cash was that whole scene could have worked without the cash on the table. Really could have. But yeah, just there to prove just, the point that she is in fact 
fact rich. Yeah, I guess. I guess. So but again, visual. did you see the house? Did what? yeah, that was good enough. That was a huge house. It was all really, really crazy. Yeah, she was so calm when she told him that she might have to that he yeah, might have just, to kill. I just her. might have to kill my husband, but it's no big deal. And he's just like, well, I hope it don't come to that. But uh, maybe we should slow things down just a little bit. He's like, he's he's trying to like block her off a little bit, and then because <laughs> he's growing. He's growing as a person. And then that's when we hear outside, right? Just, just awful again, timing. To, uh, it's a lot of that in this yeah. movie, right? Just the timing happens to be the worst. So the VSA is all broke up. Dude, they don't know what to do. They've so they tried just, everything they they've could. They've tried everything, so they're they just going to go They can't find home. Leon. So now, yeah, they're, they're going to uh, go to Lance's, Lance's house. house. They're going to try to figure out their next steps, right? And you can hear Lance is trying to give him a, a, a encouraging yep. speech, right? He's trying to rally him. He says, take that defeatist attitude and subdue it. And some more homoerotic wrestling talk. That gets really, really uncomfortable really for uncomfortable. everybody. Like every other time, it gets a little uncomfortable. Yeah, and this and they're time all it just kind of like, yeah, it's a little weird, but yeah. This, this time, time everybody's just like, okay. It's yeah, it's rough. Even Lance at the end is like, oh, I may have gone a little too far. <laughs> but um, then they <laughs> then they open the door. And they're in there trying. She's trying to fuck him and he's trying to be like, oh, maybe we shouldn't. But they're still kind of already doing it, you know. But so then when Lance busts in the door, he immediately you can see he's immediately like, oh, you oh, where, oh, it's you. Leon hits him with the you can't be mad at the Wang. No, you can't be mad at the Wang. It's not the Wang's fault. I swear if you hear it almost sounds like he says, what's up, fellas? <laughs> like real calm yeah like he was expecting a group yeah, well up, he fellas? was expecting this group what's up fellas? he doesn't get flustered easy you no know? he doesn't he's, though he's, he's always really calm. really calm even with the group of armed men coming to kill him he's just like ah oh, man they call him a son of a bitch and he's like i oh, don't don't call son of a bitch that's not a nice thing to say now uh, he stands up and they all and his dick's just and, and they're, they're just all like, like oh my god that was in my wife yes uh yes it was <laughs> <laughs> You should be proud of her. Yeah, you should be proud of her. She took it like a champ. It was so crazy. And then, dude, even you, did you notice, like, they cut to a long shot of the whole crowd with the guy who yelled that you can kind of see him going, Yeah, okay. I can't compete with that. So, you know. All right. <laughs> then we see Lester at the bar. He lets Julie know. Well, Just and this is it. what's crazy. Like, we can assume that this is maybe what he was trying to tell her when she, she pat pushed him, him off, to fuck right? Off, basically. Because no time has gone by and he already knew about the people. Trying but to, my next yeah. question is, why did he not tell Leon? It's a good point. He didn't tell Leon, hey, Leon, these guys came in here looking for you. I think they might kill you. But now that Julie is pissed off and technically probably so drunk, she could not legally leave the bar to try to stop this. Oh, and there ain't nobody in that bar that's sober Thank enough you. to drive her. Now is when Lester decides to come up and say literally those exact words. There's a group of guys. I think they might kill him. Yep, they came in here earlier. You know, you see what I'm saying? I think we might ought to do something about this. I think this. our narrator set up the story for us. Like, like he made it happen. He, like made he it was happen. like, "Look, if I don't if tell I, people if some I just key leave things, out key things, I can manipulate this whole fucking situation to be to quite where, entertaining. Where I can not only be entertained, I can actually make my friend grow as a person." And set up this nice lady, uh, Billy D. Williams, improving lives through lies. Yeah. <laughs> but so after he informs Julie that they might be killing Leon, we we immediately cut to like the zoomed in shot of Will Ferrell strapping on the wrestling He's in full gear. Market. He's got the singlet on. He's right. We're gonna <laughs> and, wrestle. And all my all I could think was there. A lot of people might be able to kill someone while wrestling. Mm -hmm. This guy, Will Lance, Ferrell, Lance, Lance ain't the dude. Lance ain't the guy. I would not look at Lance Brock and be Lesnar, like, I might not. be dying in the ring right now. He's <laughs> like, no, I think I'll be all right. And we get the best, like, he's lubing up. And do you see, like, he puts an excessive. So much. It's on just dripping. the one arm. On it's just, just the one, It's dripping though. down his arm. And tries to lube up Leon. Do you want some? Are you sure? Yeah. And even, even, um, yeah. Honey up in the balcony. She's like, you might want to take it. It can get pretty well, there, rough and shit. They, it was total, yeah, that was a anal choke yeah, going back it was so funny and he's like that's okay she's I'll like no right. I'm good she's like alright suit yourself Leon does exactly what any of us would do when you talk to a guy who's just like wrestle 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 I, I wrestle and he stuff. just he's immediately like, walks you. up and punches him in the gut yeah I'm gonna punch you like 10 Fold, times folds him over that's what usually happens when a wrestler goes up against a boxer well and then Leon just starts to walk away and like half of the group are literally just like well, oh well that's mean, it that's it that's, it. that's what done. we told him we were about to do yeah he won he won Barney's like no fuck that he's, Barney loses it he has the hardest time. Yeah. He's trying to pull that gun out of his waistband and shit, and he finally gets it out. He's like, no, he has to die. Yeah, Barney straight loses it. 
Leon starts to talk to him. Down, man. This is the moment where Leon the... Leon tells everybody, right? He's like, "Look, I, look, guys, I'm not a bad guy. You all need to treat your ladies your better. Wi- your women wouldn't go looking if you guys would try harder to do the things they one want." One dude, he even like knows him. He's yeah. like, "One guy. Did you ever once listen to your lady? All she ever wanted was for you to listen and pay attention. You, other guy, did you ever try and like get your lady in the mood? You know, all you guys you know, just I'll, need to remember. Just need to try sometimes." Harder. Try to put it in the butt. It comes up all the time. It does. Look. <laughs> and and then when all those fellas do it in the butt. Yeah. <laughs> he does. He walks away. Everybody is like, yes. Yeah. Julie shows up. Oh, she hears the speech. She, and stuff. she's like, oh, he learned. He learned. He's, He's growing. growing as a person, which is and all so I Bar- even, even Barney's like, you're right. And he throws the gun down. He's like, man, it's and fine. And we see this is. I'm the problem. This is my favorite, dude. Lance dives at the gun. And when, when he picks it up, because remember, he was lubed. So he did. He slid, slid to get the gun. When he finally is able to stand up again, he hits like eight poses, right? And each time the cr- they react, ah, ah. And I mean, when I say poses, I don't even mean like, he, they're not they're ones. not like threatening poses no, with this gun. they're goofy as fuck. They're like Charlie's Angels yes. poses with this gun. That's exactly at what least, they are. At least one of them was not even with the barrel pointed at Leon. <laughs> no, he just like uh, up in the air. Yeah. Or and then finally though he ends it with who am I kidding? That was, I'm not that, mad at that you. That was way too dramatic. I'm sorry. It I'm just with these good, guys. You're fine. They're, they're all right. I'm the problem. All right. I'm clearly gay. That's this probably what it is. And that that wraps up the the struggle in the yeah, movie. Yeah, the struggle. Then the we movie. get our nice our, our nice happy, you know, like wrap up <laughs> wrap up scene. He's back on the air, back on the radio. Everything has worked out. We don't know he's whose like radio number, station. Yeah, he's, he's like the, the number, number one. one. He also has been um he's got a, an endorsement deal yeah, for, with hog, for balls. hog balls. He's the number he's the face of uh, America's favorite one. hog balls brand. Which I thought was fucking it's hilarious. Great. And Julie is still his Yep, they've, uh, they've got together. They're, and they're, we assume they maybe they're married. Could be, could not be. Not really important. They definitely have a age. child together. Yeah, that's the important bit. They have a kid and it's a mini, it's a mini Leon. He's got a little afro and well, everything. And my favorite piece, the the thing that we'll end the movie on, because that that the last shot is just that we get to see the baby and know that they, yeah. they are doing well together. My favorite part about that, though, is scrap iron is the babysitter. Is the babysitter. <laughs> they, f- they found him a job. Yeah, yeah, man. Taking care of their baby. Fuck yeah. Like, I, it's like I good do guy. absolutely love that, though. Like, seeing him come in and, and hold just the baby Just carrying all up. the yeah, fucking yeah. shit. Push it, like, pushing the, the stroller like cart. crazy as he comes around the corner. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. It's a it. perfect job for him. Uh, but that was the movie, guys. That's how we end it. Definitely ended in a way where, hey, even if the movie had done well, they couldn't have done another one, right? Yeah, like, no, I mean, it's over. Because this if you do off. another one from this, you totally shit on this one, right? Yeah, because like, no, the whole idea ever... here is that Leon became a better person. Better person had he grew and, he and so if he becomes a shit. ladies' man again, it means that he shit on everything with Julie and growth. Yeah, you'd and... have to start the movie with them getting like. A divorce divorced or, something. or something. Not good. Yeah, no. Never make a sequel to this. We don't need it. Or if you do, it's on the kid. Oh, son of ladies, man. Right? Oh my god! But I'm we, in. I'm I'm down for that one. I'm in. I like it. That's our that's our that's next year's summer hit right there. Get on it, Hollywood. Well, speaking the of, movie was great. Movie's great. Speaking of the Colvassier, what do yeah. you think? We again we talked a little bit earlier. We said a few things. It's brandy, like we said. Unlike you, <laughs> my high school career, I do not endorse underage drinking. Agreed. My high school career, though, <laughs> yeah, was full of a lot of brandy. Not not cognac. cognac. Not not fancy French brandy. Yeah, not fancy French brandy. But brandy. And so like... Um, some, some E&J. So this... <laughs> E&J, Palmason. Uh, um, these th- this, this took me back to yesteryear, if you will, for sure. Uh, this is my first time drinking brandy, it's, cognac, and anything. It's got I, a kick. I really like it. It's got warmth. I mean, you it's know what I mean? It's like, a good burn, though. If you... Well, it's if, not like vodka a reason, where it's real harsh. There's a reason why when you watch like certain movies and they're talking about like uh, on a cold night cognac's one of those things mm, they talk about drinking it's because yeah. it does it's got that it's a very fortified kind of like burn i could to it. it and it's and it's sweet it's yeah it's because it's, 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 it's yeah it all starts um, from that fortified wine um and not to sound too pretentious or like oh sommelier or anything but it's got like these nice like cherry tones to so that's it. gonna be from the wood oh yeah from the yeah, cherry from the yeah, oak yeah yeah, yeah. From the cherry or wood. whatever it's, it's different types of barrels cherry but, wood, yeah, but from whatever barrel. type i promise that the cherry is definitely one of those things that usually comes from the barrel maybe. but yeah 
It's really good. It's a little expensive, but go try it. Go try you some Quavassier and kick back and watch you some ladies, man. All right. So, but on that note, Let's talk about what we're going to drink next week. Next week, man, we're going full frat boy college. We're going to do some fireball cinnamon whiskey. So you're saying the other end of the spectrum. The other end of the... Fa- we're we're we fancy, fancy this week. We're going white trash next week. All right. So keep that in mind, guys. You know that's your clue. Yeah, that's, that's your clue. It. Leave so your guesses in all the social media. Try to figure out medias. what you think fireball could be leading to. I think that's everything, man. I think we're done. All right. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, please remember that if you do want to know that you have indeed fallen in love, remember, you will feel it deep, deep in your pants. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. I'm from the streets. streets.